Uh, let me just first uh, start off by saying um, had a conversation with Craig Aukerman of I'm uh, going to move on and make a make a change there in our leadership on a special teams unit. I'm excited about uh, you know the possibility of Tom Quinn leading that group. Tom's going to take over those duties. Brings a lot of experience and knowledge. He's a great teacher, and so hopefully. Um, you know, we'll be able to, uh, you know, continue the stuff that we've done well, which there has been some, you know, plenty of things in there that we've done well, and hopefully, um, you know, eliminate those mistakes um, that that cost you. So I want to thank Craig for what he's done for us, uh, certainly in the time that I've been here. Um, but I uh, felt like uh, this was the the best thing for the team and, and for uh, – you know, the players moving forward, most importantly, the players. So uh, with that, take some questions on the game and upcoming game here uh, with the Dolphins. That decision, was that like something over time? Or was uh, that yeah, I just, you know, Teron, just again, just trying to evaluate, you know, what we do, um, who we do it with. You know, I just felt like, you know, this was the, 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 the timing what was – what it needed to be, and I uh, felt like it was best for the team and, and for the players, especially going forward. It's per, I mean, I don't recall you making an in-season move before. No, Corey. No, that had you know. Again, everything is, you know, there's no real precedent to, to anything. It's, you know, you try, try to get a feel for, you know, what's best and what's needed, and whether we've done something in the past. There's. You know, times in, you know, we haven't run a certain coverage or we hadn't run certain plays. And I think those decisions are are about timing and, and feel. So that's um, you know, that, that's the decision that was made. And, uh, you know, again, we're, we're going to get back to work here um, moving forward and, and trying to get as healthy as possible and, and go down and, and, and win a game against a, a very good opponent on a road and, and a big stage. Two block punts. Was it a scheme issue that they took advantage of, or I mean, what did they? No, I mean, no, I mean, again, um, you know, we'll, we'll have to make sure, um, you know, that everything that we do, uh, that there's confidence from the players, that there's an execution uh, that's that's reasonable to to expect them to do, uh, whether that's blocks on kickoff return, um, protection on the punt. You know, understanding from from the specialists of, of where pressure may come from, just like the quarterback, and you, know, you talk about pump protections, about building a pocket, and you know. So again, that's um, you know, there's a lot of things that came up. Everything you know that they you know as another team is is looking at is just like us. How do we want to attack certain things, or how do we want to play against them? You know, in the red zone or third down. Same thing would be said on on special teams and. You know, everything we do, we want to be sound in and, and make sure that we, we play with great effort and that there's execution. And, you know, so, you know, th there were, um, you know, we just have to be better going forward. But had you, major, had you had any major issues with the special teams unit before yesterday's troubles? Well, I mean, there's always positive plays. There's, you know, plays that, you know, we've had, you know, listen, you can't, you can't win games with, with, Having you know three punt blocks, and whether that's you know scheme personnel, it's it's on everything. And so again, um, decided to make a change. I guess there was, there was I guess Derek being waved to the sideline. Uh, did he have a concussion? Is he in protocol? Uh, De Derek, um, you know, just to touch on that a little bit, what was removed from the game? I saw it, you know. So I was I was headed out there just because I saw the. You know how he got up, and um, so did the, the trainers, and so did the players, which was was great. And then came over, was checked. They deemed him, um, you know, not able to return. Uh, but then, um, was doing great. Zero symptoms. Worked out this morning. Um, so, not in the protocol uh, as of now, but we would monitor how he's feeling and any symptoms that may come up just like we would do any player. So again, as of now, it's doing great. And uh, that, that's, that's great news and exciting. How does that work where you're, where you're 
pulled out, but then later you're, you're not in the protocol. Like, what's the process for that? Uh, as far as, I mean, he comes in, meet, you know what I mean? It's like we checked on him last night. We, we check in with him, and, you know, like we do every player that's, you know, injured or, or doesn't finish the game. Um, then he, you know, we check in on him in the morning. If he's able to come in, they come in, does the, you know, takes a symptom score, and that gets reported. And if there's a symptom score, then they enter into the protocol. And then when that symptom score, if there was a symptom score, then they would report it each day. And when it gets to a certain level, they start conditioning, they start weight training, and then then they see an independent doctor. They take an impact test and then an independent doctor ultimately. So as far as like trailing, just to kind of give you some context, you know, he was reporting zero symptoms, which allows him now to, to practice uh, last week, take the, the impact test, pass that, have a full practice, and then get cleared on Saturday morning by the doctor. Could have been Friday afternoon, but they were in brain surgery, so they thought that that was more important than getting him cleared from the protocol. So if that helps, that's kind of how it goes. If a player reports zero symptoms, uh, it would be hard to put them in the protocol, but you would monitor uh, his how he feels, and after he works out, check on him, good. Let him go through the day, we'll check on him again later on. And if it's still at zero, then I would assume that there's uh, not a protocol to enter into. Is Stoney's situation season ending? Yeah, Stoney's going to have to have surgery and, and get fixed and come back uh, stronger stronger than ever and, and ready to go. So certainly don't want to lose players, and, and that's uh, unfortunate. Do you proceed with caution with Derek or just to kind of monitor how things are Wednesday, Thursday, and if everything continues to look good? Sure. Practice? Yeah, I mean, I, we would, you know, I think we would do that with any player that – um, was was in that situation, whether it was Derek or or anybody else. So hope hope that he continues to have zero symptoms. And you know, not that I'm a, a doctor or any visual test, but when I spoke with him uh, after the game, him and I were probably one of the last two to leave. Um, you know, having been in this and seeing guys that were in the protocol, you know, Derek appeared uh, normal, he went home, we followed up with him at night and again today. So, you know, whatever that is, we'll, we'll, we'll monitor through the week. How you like how Tom Quinn has done since he's been here? And what's that like in season, having somebody, a new voice maybe leading that group? Well, I don't think any of us know, and I told Tom to, uh, you know, we would meet more this afternoon and that, uh, you know, this is his opportunity, you know, to continue the stuff that we do well and, and you know, we got to work hard to fix the stuff that, you know, has become or that is issues. We have to find a new punter, which is a new holder. And, um, you know, but Tom's been great. He's been, you know, he's a good teacher, like his ideas, like his, his input that he has and, you know, his experience. Have you had an opportunity to talk with the team about the movie or is the meeting coming later today? No, our players will be back in in, in, a, in a team setting on, on Wednesday. I feel like the best thing to do is, you know, get get them some rest and recover, um, treat, you know, make sure they lift, and they're through the building. We'll see them and just, you know, haven't had that conversation yet. Is Brett Kern an option, or is is, is he? Done I think any, you know. I mean, every, anybody that that can that can punt and and hold uh, would be an option. What's the division of labor challenge when you make a move like this? I mean, you, obviously, you've got those guys have done a certain amount of things. I assume other people are going to take that over. How do you manage that? Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like we have plenty of guys that can, you know, that can, that can help if if needed. I don't anticipate there being, you know, it, it just about conversations that we have about making sure that, you know, who we're going to use, who's available. Um, and making sure that uh, that the players understand, and making sure that you know they're able to execute to the best of their ability. I guess defensively, did great in the red zone, but gave up a lot of explosive plays that that put you in tough spots. When you look back at yesterday, yeah, just explosive passes. You know, no. What did you see, good and bad? I didn't have a chance to answer Jimmy's question. I just <laughs> oh, was. Oh, oh. 
I was pausing to think how I was going to answer. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, the gadget, um, which, you know, give credit to them. You know, they hit a play just like we did for a couple of ours. Um, yeah, and they just, you know, they unfortunate to, to hit one over the top there. SMB was, you know, pressed and challenged and, you know, and then, you know, Elijah, that's just, that's a mistake. You know, we have to, you know, there's a difference between a, a handing it to him and, and making him earn it. And there was a clear difference in, in those two two plays. They still got the yards and they still won the football game. So, you know, you can see how, how many good plays there are in there. Third down, run defense, swarming, handling the RPOs, being locked in, knowing what's going on, and then, you know, one play, you know, cost you. Will said that he felt yesterday was his worst game as since he took the starting job. What did what was your assessment of how he played after watching the film? Well, I certainly appreciate uh, that that attitude. I think that's what you have to be able to do. You have to be able to, you know, give credit, you know, to to the people around you when things go well, and you have to be able to accept the blame uh, when they don't go well. And they had Will had some really cool positive plays in there. Uh, there were some times where. You know, I'm sure he would have liked to to look somewhere different or deliver the football. He had some some good throws in there, and you know, 50-50 decision there on a mirrored route to hops on the left and Nick's on the right, and you know the guy on the right bit on a double move and the guy on the left didn't, and we, he looked to the left, and I'd wish he'd looked to the right. Like that's how it goes. Um, but but there were still some some really you know cool throws in there. Um, and then just continue to, to see the, the picture when, you know, if guys cut, you know, the corner cuts and drops, you know what I mean? Trying to, you know, get, get, get the big one off of that. Um, you know, and I know he'll keep working hard and he'll keep, um, you know, finding ways to, to, to help us move the football. A combination of the toughness that you kind of alluded to yesterday and then just the awareness of seeing a guy fumble the ball, go force a fumble, recover the fumble, return it, all these things. How rare is that in a guy at quarterback? Well, I mean, it just, you know, that I think that's what you're looking for in, in the entire football team, whether that's, you know, Tajay, you know, batting the pass down, Chig, you know, trying to play to the recovery, Aziz trying to play to the recovery, I mean, in a, in a dead sprint after we hit the quarterback one time. And so, you know, you asked about Will, and that was, you know, there was certainly an, an energy and an effort and, uh, you know, go go tackle the guy with the ball. Um, you know, you've seen quarterbacks kind of in the past stay out of the fray, and, you know, that, that doesn't look good. And I think that the message it sends to the team is, is a real positive one when you can say, man, I don't know if that was a fumble. I don't know if he intercepted it. I'm going to let him sort it out, but I'm going to go do my part. And... Uh, you know, he wasn't the only one, you know, but it was great to see him do that. But then also, let, let's not lose sight of the other guys that, that did that as well. Yeah, Ron Black, what you're dealing with, uh, with Jeffrey Simmons' injury? Uh, Jeffrey will be, uh, you know, he'll be out here for a couple weeks. You know, we'll see where he's at, but, but he, he'll be unavailable on Monday. The, the run blocking from Jalen Duncan, that was good, but on the opposite, the pass pro wasn't. Was good. What, what were some of the things that you saw from him? Well, I would say to, to that, um, I, I may probably disagree on how good, you know, if you just look at I think it was inconsistent. I think there were some really good things that improved from last week. Uh, I used Derek's first touchdown uh, as an example. Talked about trying to get in on the backside, get in to the line of scrimmage on the backside um, so that the big fella doesn't have to go and, and, and check you know, his feet, he kind of rolled and was able to then run by the corner, something that was very positive. Other blocks, um, you know, in the run game, need a little bit of work. Some things that we, 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 we focused on improved, much like in pass protection. There were times where really, really good, and some other times where, you know, maybe a soft edge or, you know, got beat underneath. So I would say in both of those you know, whether it was a run or a pass, that you could find uh, positive plays and then things that we need to improve on uh, from from Jalen. And, you know, Jalen was disappointed, you know, 
I, and I said, well, at least, at least you care. And uh, that's a great place to start. And uh, he'll continue to improve and just try to you know, do a little bit better each and every week. Uh, he rolled a lot of guys at him, some good players. And you know, there's, like you mentioned, there were some good plays in the run game, some good plays in pass protection, but then also some things that we'll have to continue to improve. And, you know, I'll have to see. But for just a few starts or whatever, second start, you know, we're just scratching the surface. What can he do better against, like, the speed rush of Quiddy Pay and then also the, the power that Abby comes Yeah, you have to be able to know who it is that you're playing against, read their angle of their, you know, stance and, and how are they coming. Um, you know, being able to sit down but keep your head out of it, all the things that, that we teach. And, you know, we talk about speed rushers. It's, you know, you got to get them – at the top of the pocket, you, you can't be, you can't, they can't corner at seven yards. They have to corner at nine. And, you know, with that being said, you know, it seems like a broken record, but if you're firm in the middle of the pocket and the quarterback can step up and is willing to step up and then, you know, you can run them by. And, but if you're, if they're cornering at seven yards, then it's not reasonable to think that the quarterback has a whole lot of room to step up from there. Just like Arden strip sack, uh, last week, you know, Jeffrey pushes the middle of the pocket. The quarterback can't step up, so Arden can corner at nine yards. And so those all things go hand in hand. You have two rookies there with Jalen and Peter. How do you feel the communication? Yeah, I think it's going okay. Yeah, I mean, I think it's going okay. It can always be better. Uh, I don't think we were, you know, let anybody go free, you know, per se. Um, but I think that they're working hard to communicate, and whether that's with the guard and the tackle or the tackle and the tight end on, on some of the blocking schemes that, that we were able to hit, uh, which were cool. Had a, had a bunch of double-digit runs yesterday and you know, had some ones that weren't efficient, but you know, it was good opportunities for all of us to, to be able to run the football. It looks like there's a, a little bit of an emotional exchange, I guess, between uh, Will and, uh, and DeAndre there at some point. Was that, are you okay with the way Will handled that, or, or would you kind of want him to do that a little bit more privately? What were you? Yeah, we are in front of a sixty thousand people on national television. I don't, you know, they're not unless they go into the blue tent uh, to handle things privately. Um, th these games, there's a lot of emotion that's involved, and you know, I, I think that as long as there's there's respect, you know, I think you have to understand that sometimes those conversations you know, our, I wouldn't say he, I think, you know, those things kind of happen and you get them fixed and addressed and, you know, move on and try to find ways to, to help us. Mike, can you talk through the process at all yesterday about having Colton up, Kyle down and, and getting Traylon back into the mix, but he, he wasn't, it didn't seem like it was full go for every rep. I think he only had 10. Yeah, I talked, you know, I was asked about that yesterday. I only got 48 spots, you know, and, uh, Eric's been catching punts for us. So special teams and the role that it would play, uh, I would say that uh, Colton's impact on, on special teams has been uh, noticeable and uh, been really fun to see and cool to see. Um, wanted to try to get Traylon back going, um, whether that was for the amount of snaps he played or maybe – you know, a few more, not sure, didn't know. It's, it's hard to tell kind of going into a game exactly how many snaps, but knew it wasn't going to be the, the full amount or, or 40 snaps. Um, so hopefully that can increase. And, you know, I know Kyle will be ready, you know, to go. It's just have to try to make a decision on how many players, you know, come to the game based on who does what and, and the role that they'll play. Monday, you know, the last time you were in Miami, it was what an eight-hour game. What What are some of the things like when you guys were were on that that first intermission and then the longer one? I, I know, like in Miami, some of the players like they ate barbecue, they ate mac and cheese. We were eating, the, the we were eating uh, pan pizzas pan from pizza. upstairs. The ops guys went upstairs and they were getting mini pizzas from from the uh, third deck and 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 brought them down because. You know, we ran out of food. You know, I mean, the catering wasn't coming until after the game or whatever it was. But um, certainly interesting and unique um, way to start the, my NFL coaching career. What do you do to, like, keep them ready? Because 
Well, not a whole lot. I mean, what, you know, I mean, it's like this one's going to be a while, so let's let's take our pads off and 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 hang out, and then try to have an idea of when it may end, and you know, try to ramp back up, and went back out, and then did the whole thing uh, all over again. So you know, I have to be ready for everything, I guess. This year against you know their weapons and, and their speed. Well, it's just what it is. It's a it's a speed. You know, great skill players, speed, uh, you know, really good timing. You know, not only is it, is it fast, but it's, it's, there's, a, there's a timing element to it that, you know, it's not just all just run by you. There's, there is a timing element. And then what they do after the, the catch has been impressive. You know, their ability to, to translate that speed into the run game uh, has also been something and then obviously the defense is is playing well you don't see left-handed quarterbacks very often what does that change in terms of how you how you attack them well when you start talking about matching a hand and and, and making sure that you know you're trying to match you know normally which would have been with you know your left uh, trying to find ways to impact the ball the way that it comes out some of the some of the rpos come out much quicker um you know to, to his left than, than what tradition he would. When you look at your, at your run game, it, it appeared you guys were a lot stronger on first down yesterday. And, and how important is that moving forward, especially against a team like Miami on Monday night, if you can continue? Yeah, you're going to have to possess the football. We're going to do everything that we can to try to possess the football. Um, and again, it was about just getting into the line of scrimmage. Uh, Bax did a nice job. I thought Derek ran with, the, with a purpose. We gave him, you know, some places to go. I thought Tajay ran with a purpose. You know, it looked like kind of what we wanted it to look like. Not that everyone was perfect. There was some pressure, some movements that, that got us. But, you know, we covered them up and we got to 44. When we blocked 44, we, we gained some yards. Um, I thought our receiver, I thought, you know, receivers did a, did a nice job for the most part trying to, to get the support player and, um, you know, helping us get some extra yards. An improved level of, of physicality in the run game, more combative style. Yeah, I mean, I think again, just trying to get into the line of scrimmage with this penetrating front that Indianapolis ran. Um, you, you know, they, they you have to be able to get in there and cover them up, stop their charge, but but also try to find you know two linebackers that that can run, and uh, you know that's a fine line uh, of doing that is trying to stop their charge so somebody else can take them over, and then trying to get to the second level. Had some good opportunities of that, and uh, you know we'll need a lot more. We'll be able to run a football and marry up that uh, run game with our with our play pass. How tough a situation was it for, for Trey yesterday coming in at the end? And I guess is is Christian, you know, the hamstring get him again there? Uh, yeah, yeah, the hamstring got him again there, and um, you know everybody's got to prepare as a starter. I mean, you never know when you're going to go in there, what you're going to have to be able to do. Whether that's a defensive lineman, if a player goes down, it's a inside linebacker, Tajay, you know, going in there and just more of the load or an offensive lineman. Um, we've seen that happen over and over. So, you know, just you have to be ready when 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 your number's called. Just a couple of plays uh, Jeff went back in. Uh, was he just testing the injury? Was he just kind of what was the process of him? Yeah, I, I think he really, you know, did everything that he could, um, you know, and even made a, a play, um, and it, it just wasn't going to be able to, to to do anything. And if you can't protect yourself out there, nobody wants to to put a player in, in, in harm's risk. And we're going to trust Jeff to say when he can go and when he can't. And uh, but but certainly don't want to put a put any player you know uh, at risk when they can't protect themselves, especially inside. Uh, playing defensive line where there's you know, a lot of bodies that are coming after you and they, you know, are, are trying to get you. So, we'll, we'll never want to never want to put a player in that position.